Quick disclaimer, what I will show you is a band-aid solution, but just to save yourself a rabbit hole or two, there is no solution that is not a band-aid solution. Everybody who claims otherwise either did not understand the subject matter or has different requirements, a different workflow or a different environment. To make sure your DaVinci Resolve export looks fine in DaVinci Resolve, QuickTime and YouTube, here are the requirements for my settings to work. Requirement number one, you are on a Mac. If you are on Linux or Windows, this does not apply to you. Number two, you do not have a calibrated reference monitor hooked up to your Mac. This doesn't mean that your monitor is not calibrated. If your monitor is calibrated, that is great. What I'm talking about is that your Mac is not connected to an I.O. box like the Blackmagic Ultra Studio, which is then hooked up to a reference monitor. If this is your setup, please look elsewhere. This video will not apply to you. Again, I mean that you do not have a dedicated monitor that only shows the clean video feed from DaVinci Resolve using an I.O. box like the Blackmagic Ultra Studio. Only if you have that, then this video does not apply to you. If your monitor is calibrated, everything is great, you can follow along. Requirement number three, you are delivering to web, meaning your content will live on your client's website, YouTube, TikTok, Vimeo, MySpace, Instagram, wherever. And going hand in hand with this, requirement number four is that you don't have the control over what your audience uses. So your audience could use an Android phone, an iPhone, a PC, a Mac, Google Chrome, Firefox, pretty much anything that you can imagine and you do not have control over this. So if all of this sounds like you, here is what you need to do in DaVinci Resolve. In DaVinci Resolve, make sure you go to DaVinci Resolve and Preferences. Alternatively, you can use the keyboard shortcut Command and Comma. Here we go. And under System and General, you need to tick these boxes. So first and most importantly, you need to tick the box use Mac display color profiles for viewers. This is the most important setting. Next, as a fail safe, also make sure that automatically tag Rec. 709 scene clips as Rec. 709A is also selected. In and of itself, this tick box doesn't change anything. This is more a fail safe that in case you forget to tag a clip properly, DaVinci Resolve will do this for you. Okay, and last but not least, this is not a requirement, but it's nice to have. Make sure you enable the 10-bit precision in viewers if 10 bit precision is available. Once you tick these three boxes, click save and DaVinci Resolve will prompt you to restart DaVinci Resolve. Really make sure that you restart DaVinci Resolve after these settings because those are system wide settings in DaVinci Resolve and you really need to relaunch DaVinci Resolve in order for them to take effect. Next, we need to talk about your project settings. To go to your project settings, you can go to file and hit project settings. Alternatively, you can use the shortcut Shift 9. I will just do that. Okay, once we're in the project settings, go to color management. In color management, make sure you choose the color signs that you like to work in. In my case, it's DaVinci YRGB. It's important that you do not select DaVinci YRGB color managed because this workaround does not work with the color managed workflow. So DaVinci YRGB, not DaVinci YRGB color managed. And for the other working spaces, I mean, you can also work in Asus, this will work as well. Just make sure it's not color managed. And DaVinci Y RGB it is. Here we go. Next, let's talk about the timeline color space. The timeline color space is basically the color space that your timeline uses in order to perform calculations. Traditionally, this is called an intermediate color space because this is just where you would do your color grading before you go to your target color space. For that, make sure that you choose the timeline color space that you like to work in. I like to work in DaVinci White Gamma, DaVinci Intermediate, but I also know people who work in Asus um, or ARRI, so choose whatever you want to use. And last but not least, and this is the most important setting, the output color space, which is how your final project will be exported. This should be set to Rec. 709A. I should note that Rec. 709A is not an official standard. Rec. 709 in DaVinci Resolve just means Rec. 709 for Apple. And because we are on the Mac, we need to deal with this whole gamma shift situation in the first place. So this is why we need to select Rec. 709A. With all of this selected, make sure you hit save. I mean, I can't hit save now because I didn't change anything. Last but not least, in more recent versions of DaVinci Resolve, you can also change your timeline settings. So this means you have your general settings, then you have your project settings where all of your different timelines live, and then you also have timeline settings. So 
pay attention because this is a new addition or a more recent addition to DaVinci Resolve. In order to change the timeline settings, you need to go to the cut page for whatever reason, into the media pool and right click your timeline. There, you can access the timeline settings. As you can see, if I go, for example, to the media page and right click my timeline there, there are no timeline settings to be found. Additionally, if I go to the edit page and do the same thing in my media pool, I right click my timeline and you can see there are no timeline settings. So for whatever reason, timeline settings are only available on the cut page. So let's go to the cut page, right click the timeline and choose timeline settings. In the lower left corner, you can see use project settings is ticked. This checkbox is ticked by default, and this means that the timeline will inherit the settings from your project. This is what we want. And since this is checked by default, everything is fine. In case you monkeyed around with these settings, just double check that this tick box is set. Okay, once this is out of the way, we can click OK, and then we are good to color grade. Once we're done color grading, we of course need to export our project. So choose the export settings that you like or that you need to choose. But make sure under advanced settings down here, you go in here and select the color space tag Reg 709 and the gamma tag Reg 709A. By default, this is set to use project settings and if you have configured your project correctly, everything should work out. But I don't know, I always have a hard time trusting automatic settings in DaVinci Resolve. This is why I always set this manually. Last but not least, if you have an Apple device with an XDR display, go to your control center, display, and change your reference mode to HDTV during color grading or critical review of your work. Now you can finally color grade on your Mac, knowing that it will look good across all of the devices. Please note though that your image will still vary from device to device or from app to app, but it's at least in a margin of error that is the best middle ground. There is really nothing you can do about this. This is just the reality we live in. Every app and every device interprets content differently. But what I just showed you is the best middle ground solution that looks decent across all devices. And if you're interested in learning a powerful system that will let you color grade everything with ease, you should watch this video next.